Andy Roberts here again, distributed from distributedresearch.net, with another tutorial in the series about Seashore, the open source image editor for Mac. And in this one, I've got a picture which I've chosen to use as an example. It's a picture of the pagoda at Kew Gardens. And I'm going to zoom out so we can see all or most of the picture. The interesting thing about this one is that the pagoda itself and the trees in the foreground are all so dark they're practically black. So the only colour in the picture is the sky, which is an interesting sky. It's got blue, white, shades of blue, very dramatic sort of sky. But I was thinking perhaps I could reduce this uh, to just two colours, the whole thing, and then it could be used you know, maybe as a, as a logo or a a kind of stamp, um, something that can be printed in just two colours, like purple and yellow, or dark green and pale blue. So I'm looking at the selection tools. We've got the rectangular select, the s elliptical select, lasso, where you can carefully draw around things, the polygon for making multiple sided shapes and selecting them. And this one called the Color Selection Tool, which is um, known as the magic wand in some some programs. And by selecting that one, it's got a tolerance level. So what it does is it looks, when you click somewhere, it looks for a continuous area of the picture where the colour is all the same, or nearly all the same. I say nearly, that's where this tolerance comes into it. The higher the tolerance, the more forgiving it will be about jumping over slightly different colours. So the higher the tolerance, the more likely it is to select larger areas, or the whole picture if you've got it too high. So we should be able to keep the tolerance fairly low, about 50 or something, and select all the black because it's uh, nice and consistently black, I think. So I click there, and you see the sky went a bit darker. That's because it's not selected. The unselected area grays out a little bit, if you like. So we've now selected the whole of the black foreground area, which should be quite handy. Um, if I were to press the delete key now, it would take away the black and reveal the background underneath. So in this case, I've got the colours foreground and background. I've got the foreground set to a bright purple. And the background will set to red. So, as I said, I've selected the, the black continuous area, press the delete key, and nearly everything goes red. But maybe I've got a better way of doing this separation. Perhaps if I undo that and then change the selection. It's not in the selection menu. Go to Edit and select the inverse. So everything that is selected will become not selected, and everything that's not selected will be selected. Well, it turns it inside out. So we've now selected all of the sky, and we'll leave the pagoda and the tree behind, I think. So now when I press delete, the sky will go bright red. And it leaves most of the pagoda, but not all of it. Look, I lost the little mast at the top. I wasn't tolerant enough to include that. So I'm going to go right back to the selection tool increase the tolerance to 100 or so. Right, now let's select him and invert the selection, edit, select inverse, delete, still not enough, undo, undo, turn the tolerance up to 150, select Select the inverse, delete the sky, that's it. 
That's lovely. Now I've deleted the sky but left the pagoda and the little masty thing at the top. So I've now got pretty much two colours, the red and the black, and I can do a lot with this, I think. I've now got the sky selected. I'll go back to the inverse selection again. So I've selected the black and see if I can fill that with um, a gradient. Now, what is a gradient? A gradient is like rainbow paint. It's, it's two colours and it slowly, gradually moves from one colour to another and it uses the foreground and the background so I'll want to choose some light colours so I'll choose yellow for the background and orange for the foreground that should make a good gradient and by slicking, clicking the gradient tool look it says in grey here the length you drag the cursor for affects the gradient's appearance it actually tells it how steep the gradient is, how quickly to move from one colour to another, to move from the foreground colour to the background colour. So if I drag the cursor a short distance, wow, <laughs> I get this gradient that's got orange and yellow, orange and yellow in quite short steps. The reason why it's coming out as a circle is because I've chosen the gradient style called radial. If I switch that to linear, I can do it again. Short run of the cursor, then lift off the mouse clicker. We get a repeating pattern that's in straight lines rather than circles switch off the repeating pattern. Now make a slightly longer stroke. This is more the kind of effect I was looking for. It's, this is a gradient that slowly changes from the orange to the yellow about this vertical axis because I drew it with a mouse. If I went diagonally I'll start in the bottom left hand corner, drag to the top right hand corner and let go. I get a gradient that goes in that axis. Do the same thing but a bit shorter. Across the middle but still diagonal. And you can see it gets this sort of diagonal sunset type effect which uh, could be interesting in the sky perhaps. But we've got it in the foreground. I think that's enough for now. So just to recap, I use the magic wand or the color select tool to pick out all of the black background of the pagoda. I could then delete that selection to reveal the background color or I could use edit and select the inverse to select everything that isn't the pagoda and the trees. And That's my way of selecting the sky even though the sky is quite complicated with lots of different cloud patterns and different colours and shades in the clouds, I could select all of them by selecting everything that's not the reverse, which was conveniently fairly black. Then used the gradient tool to put in uh, an effect, if you like, a colour effect that goes from one colour to another, from the foreground colour to the background colour. And the first time I did this using the the gradient style radial. We've got the uh, pagoda, we've got a gradient, a red sky. I've had a good look around the tools, the selection, colour selection tool and the gradients. Signing off now, this has been Andy Roberts for distributedresearch.net, looking at Seashore, the image editor. Bye for now, hope to see you next time.